Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with Richard Homsony from Toro Energy. In this interview, we discuss the impact that a Russian uranium export ban could have on the uranium market, as well as the changing sentiment towards uranium and what it means for uranium investors. We also get into Toro Energy and the impact that the current regulatory environment has had on explorers and developers in Western Australia towards or focused on uranium, as well as what investors can expect out of the company over the next year. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Richard, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for the invitation, Steve. Great to be here. So let's start talking a little bit of macro. Uh, there's currently rumors that Russia is about to ban the export of uranium. How much of an impact do you suspect that this could have on, on the market? Well, look, we're already in a situation where security of supply, the source of supply is a big deal for the uranium market and fuels its growth. You've got Western supply, Eastern supply, what the world is looking for and willing to pay a premium for is supply from the West. So look, this will fuel the continued strength in the uranium prices amongst other things, Steve. Do you think that the West has done enough to address the impact that this may have to enriched products? Look, there's a lot more that needs to happen because supply isn't easily isn't easy to come by and normally it takes a few years to permit a mine. Also, the fact is the world's greatest uranium resources or greatest endowment of uranium resources are, are in Australia, are located here by far, yet we're only the fifth biggest producer because we have regulatory issues here. So, no, I don't think that... Um, uh, that's been addressed, particularly with the world signing up to a net zero mandate. There's a lot more to go uh, on the supply side, and we're going to see just demand accelerate from here. Uh, the Microsoft deal with their nuclear power purchasing agreement with Three Mile Island uh, just a few days ago exacerbates that uh, demand side is going to continue to strengthen. That, that's exactly what my next question was going to be, is uh, when we look at that deal with Microsoft, uh, do you think that this is a sign that sentiment has finally turned the corner towards nuclear energy and we're going to see more mass adoption around the world? Look, definitely. I mean, Microsoft, you couldn't ask for a bigger brand ambassador for nuclear and therefore demand for uranium from companies like us. Um, they definitely see their AI ambitions being fueled by nuclear. I mean, the advent of the small modular nuclear reactor hasn't even kicked in. So what we expect is that all of the global um, names that are going to be big on AI going forward are going to fuel that, let alone electricity for domestic household and business use with the larger nuclear power plants. So we're at the beginning of something big here, Steve. Okay, so let's talk about Toro Energy. It's the first time we've had you guys on. We normally talk to Canadian listed companies. You guys are listed in Australia, but there's tremendous demand on our platform for stories about uranium. What's the high level of overview for Toro Energy? Sure. So we we have all our projects located here in Western Australia. Our flagship project is the Waluna Uranium Project, 700 kilometers northeast of the capital here in Perth. Uh, we have three deposits there, Lake Maitland, Lake Way, and Centipede slash Millipede, twin deposits we regard as one. So we got 73.6 million pounds there. And outside of Waluna, we have exploration projects in WA that host uranium resources. So we have approximately just under another 30 million pounds in total there. Uh, and all up, we have 112.7 million pounds of U308. And across our projects, we got a significant uranium inventory of about 89 million pounds, which simply acts as a byproduct credit. So we do host a significant endowment of uranium. Uh, and yeah, we're definitely advancing those projects adjacent to our government policy here. Okay. So when we talk about advancing the Wilona project, what's the next steps here? Well, we disclosed the updated scoping study in June of this year just for Lake Maitland. So I said we got three deposits and we focused our studying efforts on Lake Maitland and we got an 832 pre-tax 
Aussie dollar NPV with a two-year payback and a magnificently low all-in sustaining cost of $30.55 US per pound U308. So what we're doing at the moment is running a pilot plant um, to uh, up uh, scale the confidence in our scoping study into a feasibility study level of confidence with our processing route, which only has a 200 million US capex. Uh, we've trialed the metallurgical process that we spent years developing at the lab. Now we want to do it pilot plant level. Uh, so the design is almost complete and we'll be going and drilling and feeding samples, not just from Lake Maitland, but all three deposits, Steve. So Lake Way and Centipede also, so that we can do some sort of study around the financials around the other two projects. And the big thing is we might be able to truck some of the materials from those northern deposits, Lake Way and Centipede, to the southern Lake Maitland uranium deposit and get a big uplift on that 832 million NPV. It really is um, a highly optional project. We've got many levers to pull. The best version of that project, not just financially, but technically, is yet to be established. So we're excited to deliver that news over the next uh, few months and well into next year. What can you tell us about Australia as a mining jurisdiction in terms of uranium? My understanding is you guys are in Western Australia and yes. uh, there's been some... Uh, we'll say, uh, headwinds in terms of uh, regulations in Western Australia. Uh, maybe for those of us that are kind of new to uh, uranium in Western Australia, you can walk us through what's happening there. Sure. So we have a Labor government in power in Western Australia, and we have a Labor government in power in South Australia. Now, in South Australia, they have permitted a project and a new uh, uranium mine is up and going uh, a few months ago. Yet the same party here um, has a left faction, which appears to be blocking the uh, uranium favourable uranium policy settings here. So we did uh, previous management uh, got a permit both at state and federal level back in 2017. So we need to when the previous government was in power. There is another state election coming up. The opposition government is pro-uranium, has been strong in its support for a uranium mining industry here in Western Australia. So if there's a change in government, there'll be a change in government policy, but I'm confident that once the election comes and goes, even if the incumbent government remains in power, there'll be a window to start having a proper conversation with them about unlocking the uranium industry. And look, our project can be developed alongside that discussion because, as I said, we got many lever, uh, many levers to pull to increase in value and work out what the right project is to build and deliver a big return to our shareholders once policy settings align. Uh, we also have a nuclear power debate. We don't have nuclear power as an option in Australia, and there's been a lot of discussion about getting nuclear up and going in Australia, but the thing is, the new uranium mining industry doesn't depend upon nuclear uh, being adopted in Australia. What we need to see is that uh, there's a permission for us to export uranium to those countries that want to continue to decarbonise or amplify or accelerate their decarbonisation efforts in light of net zero and in light of the fact that supply is getting scarce. We've got a structural deficit at the moment that is going to fuel the uranium price curve upwards and uh, and significantly upwards. So really, I think once the election, the noise of the election comes and goes, there'll be a window here that we can see some shift in Western Australia. How many uranium mines are active in Australia right now? Um, we've got uh, Boss Energy running their honeymoon mine. There was an ERA mine up in the Northern Territory going. Um, which is winding down. And we've got also the Olympic Dam, which produces many minerals, among them uranium in South Australia. So it's all in South Australia, Northern Territory, so Central Australia. Um, but the other governments are yet to adopt permissive uranium mining policies. Uh, the next cab off the rank, hopefully, will be Western Australia because of the endowment that we have here of uranium in the ground. 
Okay, so if I'm an investor watching this and I uh, either have you guys on my watch list or I'm currently invested, uh, what am I w looking out for with the company over, say, the remainder of 2024 or, or, or over the next year? So look, our study efforts are continuing. Like I said, we want to show uh, higher financial returns from our existing project portfolio. So that involves if we have a processing operation at Lake Maitland to the south, how many materials from Lakeway and Centipede Millipede can be trucked down to Lake Maitland and processed there economically to increase the value of a Lake Maitland processing operation. So we're doing that work. Um, we recently restated all of our resources and at 100 ppm cutoff, we've got, as I said, um, 73.6 million pounds at Waluna, which has been an uplift of 17% from previously stated resources at 200 ppm. And we've got a big 30% uplift in vanadium um, at that cutoff. So we will finish the design of our pilot plant. We will commission the construction of our pilot plant, which um, we'll, we've already started ordering items and we will go and feed samples into that pilot plant to see how they behave under the processing circuit we want to use. Um, we think it's a low cost operation uh, at scoping study level and that will bear out at feasibility study level. So what you can see is that all of the fruits of our research over the years and developing what is the best way to attack Waluna how do we get the most out of the Waluna Uranium project? You can expect to see news around that and or you can expect that it will be positive news. All right, well, Richard, thanks very much for hopping on here. Um, I think uh, you guys have a very interesting project and uh, the Uranium market uh, is definitely back. So we appreciate you taking the time to do this and hopefully uh, we can chat uh, in, in the future as you guys move your project further to production. Excellent. So you can also expect the gold and nickel company to be demerged. So shareholders can expect a share in a new company also in the short term, but really great to have been here talking to you, Steve, and I look forward to doing it again. And one last question for you. Is, is, is there any interest in ever getting a listing in, in Canada for our Canadian viewers? Look, I think when uh, regulatory conditions permit and there's money that flows in significantly from Canada. We already have a significant support of some outstanding shareholders in Canada. That's something we could look at uh, in the horizon there, Steve. So yeah, watch this space. Th thanks for doing this, Richard. Perfect. See you later, Steve. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let us know what you think in the comment section. Thanks, everybody.